اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا محمد و آلہ الطاہرین ورس نمبر سیونٹی ایٹ فرام سور آل عمران و ان منہم لفریقا یلبون السنتہم بالکتاب لتحسبوہ من الکتاب وما هو من الكتاب ويقولون هو من عند الله وما هو من عند الله ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون There is indeed a group of them who twist their tongues to mimic the book that you may suppose that it is from the book though it's not from the book and they say it is from Allah though it's not from Allah. And they attribute lies to God, and they know. This is in continuation of certain things that the Jewish uh, scholars of Medina were doing to confront the position of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a messenger of God, by saying that, His descriptions do not match the descriptions of what we find in the Torah. So when they turned and twisted their tongues, it says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا There is a group of them. And certainly these groups that could mimic the book or that could fabricate certain passages from the Torah were the scholars. scholars of, uh, of Jewish scholars of Banu Qurayza or Banu Nazir and others. So there, there, was, there are a group of them who twist. The Yalbuna, lay is to twist and to- fold and turn. So Yalbuna al sanatahum means they twist their tongue in a way that they give a tone to their fabrications so that you think that it is from the Torah, is from the book, is from the book of God. The, someone who doesn't know would think. Now here we can have two different uh, interpretations. First one is that they made certain passages when they were reciting the Torah, and they recited it in a way that people thought that it is from the book. Or the other meaning is that they turned and twisted the meanings of the, of the words in a way that people thought that this meaning is from the book. However, the first meaning, the first interpretation is more plausible because it says, يَلْوُونَ أَلْسَنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ They twist their, their uh, tongues to mimic the book to make it like the book. Yalwunahu bil kitab means that they recited something like the book of God so that you would think at the, it is from the book. And people who, would not, who are not familiar with the Torah, also they would think that this is from the Torah. And Allah, of course, says, Wama huwa min al-kitab. This is not from the book because the book is something which is revealed to to Moses, uh, peace be upon him, or the prophets after him, and not, of course, something that the rabbis would have made, whether they thought that they were doing something good by interpreting it in a way that uh, uh, it would not match the description of the prophets. I mean, they, they made some statements in interpretation of those descriptions. And then they said, and recited it in a way that it mimicked the book, and they said, this is from the book. Now, what's the difference here? They do it in a way that you think this is from the book. They fabricate this in a way that you think this is from the book. And they say this is from Allah while it's not from Allah. So what's the difference? Because the previous one 
would suffice, the, the previous sentence would suffice saying, If it's not from Kitab, that means it's not from Allah. However, sometimes it happens that due to certain interpretations, certain uh, sort of uh, deep delving into an idea, one tries to defend that idea in a way that uh, make people believe in it. And he thinks that he's doing this because of God. And he thinks that his interpretation is something which has come from Allah. So maybe some of them, they knew some of them, they were so zealous uh, in their uh, so zealots in their views, they had such a zeal and such a passion for their views that they thought that well, it, God cannot have said anything like that, a anything apart from that, anything different from that. So this is from Allah. Although it, I am interpreting it in, in this way, it is from Allah. Wa yaquluna huwa min indillah, wa ma huwa min indillah. Of course, it's not from Allah. It's what they have made by their limited and short-sighted understanding of the book of God. And then they say that, of course, what we understand is what God wants us to understand. And they, of course, they are attributing lies to God by saying such a thing. This goes to certainly the second group of people who they say this is from God, what we understand and what we interpret is from God. Uh, they are actually attributing lies to God. However, وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ makes a distinction between those who do this unintentionally not knowing. I mean, there are certain people who give an interpretation of the book, of the creed, of, of religious teachings, and they think that this is really from God. They don't know that their interpretation is wrong. However, here about them, he says that they know that their interpretation of, is wrong. That they know that they are attributing lies to God. And maybe there were, there were different groups here. Some people actually made passages and attributed to the book. Some people interpreted passages from the book in a wrong way and said that this is from God. Our interpretation is the correct one. And some of them did it unknowingly and some did it in a way that they know it. They know that are attributing lies to God. They know. And of course, it is this group that Allah is uh, directing his criticism to them. They know their interpretation is wrong and they are attributing that interpretation to the verses of the book, to God while knowing it and of course they deserve every type of criticism and rebuke now the following verse verse 79 i think is shifting from a, a sort of interjection of discussion between the prophet and the jews going back to the main subject of the surah Ali Imran, which is the uh, debate about the, 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 the reality of Jesus, uh, rejecting his divinity, and uh, the argument with the Christians of Najran. So it goes back to the main theme of the surah. The, the, the few verses which were talking about the Jews were just an interjection in between such discussions. And we find this style in the Quran in, in many places because, of course, there is an intervention there.
for example, in this case, by the Jews, and there is an argument with them, and then coming back to the main subject. Verse number 79. It does not behoove any human that Allah should give him the book, judgment, and prophethood. And then he should say to the people, be my servants instead of Allah. Rather, he would say, be godly people because of your teaching the book and because of your studying it. This is a very beautiful verse. Uh, explaining the position of the messengers of God and those holy people that Allah has given them something of the supernatural uh, teachings. The first beautiful uh, part of the verse is the usage of the term bashar, ma kana le basharan. It does not behoove any human, indicating that the messengers, the saints, those people who have been given the book and Nubuwa, they are all Bashar. And no matter how much you try to elevate them in their status, they are still human beings, they are Bashar. Yes, of course, Bashar has many different levels and different uh, grades and calibers of, uh, of intelligence, of understanding of spirituality, but still is Bashar. They are born out of the wombs. They have grown uh, from childhood to adulthood. They eat food. They have all the needs that a human being has. So being honored by such uh, favors and blessings of Allah would not take any person, any human being, beyond being a bashar, being a human being. So, مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرِ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنُّبُوَةِ That Allah should give him the book, the hukm and nubuwa. Now, here, some members of the community of Bashar have been given all these blessings together. لَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنُّبُوَةِ like For example, about Ali Ibrahim, certain members of Ali Ibrahim, like Moses, like Ibrahim himself, like Ishaq, like our Prophet, peace be on him, like Jesus, Kitab and Hukm and Nubuwa have been given to them, to them together. Now, Kitab in in the Quran has been used in different uh, uh, meanings, has different wujuh, so to speak. And depending on the context, we have to give it the meaning uh, which deserves the context. For example, uh, in the verses which, which says, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكْ رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا a point a messenger from among them communicate, communicating reciting your communications to them and teach them kitab and hikmah here kitab because yatlu alayhim ayatik is the book isn't it communications of allah is the book which is given to them Ayatul Kitab. And here Kitab has a different meaning than the book itself. Here it means what is written in the book as obligation of people. Inna salata kana al kitaban mawquta. 
salat is an obligation kitab is obligation like kutiba alaykum siyam siyam is written for uh, on you as an obligation so in that context kitab means all the rulings obligations which are written in the book as opposed to hikma which are the teachings and uh, concepts which are given to human beings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however here kitab means the book itself the book which is given to the messengers so it is it is it does not behoove any human that allah should give them a kitab and hook now hook certain uh, commentators have interpreted hook as hikmah because they come from the same root and hikmah is wisdom of course that high grade of wisdom which comes from lob of the of the very core of the intellect which connects a person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Whoever is given hikmah, that type of wisdom, is given uh, a great good, something which is not measurable at all. لَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ However, We understand from different contexts and different verses of the Quran in which uh, the hukm is used is different from hikmah. Of course, hikmah is something which all anbiya have. However, hukm is, as is translated here rightly, is that judgment which distinguishes between right and wrong categorically in a divine manner. By divine manner, I mean that it is taught to people by God. If some, if a person is given this hukm, that means he can rule in the spiritual matters. Whatever he says, in terms of action or in terms of creed and teachings, it is final. And this is only given to al-mukhlasun, from al ibad those who are made pure, who are purified by God. Not mukhlasun, who try to be pure, to be sincere, but those who have been made sincere after their effort for sincerity. They have been upgraded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why no person has hukm to describe God except this mukhlasun, subhanallah an ma yasifun, illa ibad Allah al-mukhlasin. Allah is beyond, is uh, distance from whatever people describe except the mukhlasun. Those who are in the position, fi buyutin, adhna Allah an turfa'a wa yudhkara fi hasma. They are in a position that Allah has permitted them to describe him, to mention his names, saying what names he has. This is hook. And this hook is given to, like for example, Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Rabbi habli hukman wa'al habli bisali. Give me that hook. That I make no mistake ever in whatever I have to do and in whatever I have to say about you. Or, for example, about Yahya alayhi salam. Yahya was not given a, a kitab, but he was given hukm. وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ sabiya. When he was a child, we gave him hukm. And that is, he never ever, since childhood, whatever he said about God was right, whatever he said about action was right. This is, this is the judgment, that type of judgment in the spiritual matters. So, مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرًا أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالْنُبُوَّةِ Now certain people are given nubuwa but not, are not given kitab. Or, well, can we this somehow uh, separate between hukm and nubuwa? Are there certain people who are given nubuwa but are not given hukm? Uh, 
maybe, maybe there are certain people who have this position of Nububa, but uh, they cannot judge in everything. Their level of knowledge, although they are MBA, but their level of, level of knowledge is much less than level of knowledge of some other MBA who have a higher grade of Nububa and can rule. But maybe it's, uh, it's very difficult to differentiate or separate Hukm and Nububa. They are always go together. But they are somehow separated. There are some people who are given hook but are not nubuwa. This is what we say about our Imams, alayhi, alayhi And that's why here they are actually mentioned separately. There are certain people who are given nubuwa but not kitab. Certain people who are given hook but not nubuwa. But certainly those who are given kitab are given huk and nubuwa. So there are three different things. Siddiqun, which is the position of our Aymma alayhi salam, these are the people who are given hukm. Whatever they say about God is correct, but they are not given nubuwa. And uh, the, 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 the idea of separating between them here is because they are separable. There are maybe Nubuwa is not separable from Hok, but Hok is separable from Nubuwa. So it does not behoove any human that Allah should give him the book, the judgment, and the prophethood. Then he says, Thumma he says to people, Kunu ibadan li min Be my servants. Be my Ibad, uh, as rather than being the Ibad of Allah. Uh, there is a Sha'an al-Nuzul for this uh, verse mentioned in Majma al-Bayan. One of the scholars from uh, Banu Qurayza, Abu Rafi, and one of the scholars of Najran, a Sayyid, about whom we talked before, said, they said to Prophet, قَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ أَتُرِيدُ أَنَّ أَبُدَكَ وَنَتَّخِذَكَ رَبَّهُ What is your mission? They want us to worship you and say that you are our Lord. Well, Christians were, of course, familiar with this idea because they regarded Jesus to be the Lord and they worshipped Jesus. But about uh, Jews, maybe he was somehow uh, uh, following the, uh, the, the, the Sayyid from Najran to receive an answer to criticize the Prophet, peace be on him. So they said, Ya Muhammad, what is your mission? Is your mission like Jesus? Of course, in the opinion of the Christians of Najran, that he was, he, he declared himself as the Lord and wants, uh, wanted us to worship him. I seek refuge in Allah if anything than anyone except Allah should be worshipped. And I seek refuge that I command anyone to worship anything be, beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَا بِذَلِكَ بَعَثَنِي وَلَا بِذَلِكَ أَمَرَنِي This is not my mission. And God has not commanded me to, to convey this to anyone. And after this conversation between these, this, this Jewish scholar and uh, that Christian scholar, this verse was revealed, مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرًا أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكَتَابَ وَالْعَقْمُ وَالْنُبُوَّةِ well, it may have been somehow raised uh, during the conversation between Christians and the Prophet, peace be upon him. But uh, it, this uh, verse seems to be actually addressed to the Christians against what they believed about Jesus. That because they believed Jesus said that I am the Lord. And they believe Jesus said that you have to worship me. 
And here the answer is, Jesus was a bashar. And it does not behoove a bashar that Allah gives them kitab and hub and nubuwa, and they say, kunu ibad and li ibad. And abid, there's a difference between ibad and abid. Uh, ibad are usually, is usually used for those who serve Allah. Well, abd is used commonly between a slave and those who serve Allah. But abad is the, the plural of abd, who is a slave of people, is abid. The plural of, of those who serve Allah is abad. So they would not say, kunu abad and li min that you should worship me beside Allah. What they say is this, and this is a very categorical statement, rejecting any idea which would place any human being parallel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, walakin, what they say is this, كُنُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابُ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ But be godly people. Rabbani is attributed to Rabb. Of course, Rabb, Rabbi, but there is this Aleph and Noon added to emphasize the attribution. Be Rabbani, a person who is always attached to his creator, to his Lord, to Rab, always thinks about him, serves him. This is the meaning of Ar-Rabbani. وَلَا كُنُوا رَبَّانِينَ مَنْ دُونَ اللَّهِ Now, before going to the to, to more detailed explanation of the term Rabbani, there's a couple of hadiths from the Prophet, peace be upon him, which is very important here. In Uyuna Akbar al-Raza, it's reported, Imam al-Raza as reportedly reported this from the Prophet, peace be upon him, who said, لا ترفعوني فوق حقي فإن الله تعالى اتخذني عبدا قبل أن يتخذني نبيا do not elevate me above my haq, what is right about me. Because Allah took me as an abd before taking me as a prophet. Before I am a prophet, I am Abdullah. And this is what, of course, we testify in our salat. Ashadu an Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. We say that he is his Abdullah, and then we say he is messenger of God. And then he recited, And there's this hadith from Amirul Mumin alayhi salam. Two groups of people have perished because of me. And I have, I am innocent. It's not my fault. It's their fault. Muhibbun mufrad wa mubghazun mufrad. The one who is extreme in their love for me. And the one, the, the ones who are extreme in their hate for me. Wa ana la bara'un ila Allah ta'ala mimma yaghlu fina. I am, I disown. I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those who uh, who go beyond the limits in describing our merits. Ghali is extremist, isn't it? فَيَرْفَعْنَا فَوْقَ حَدْنَا كَبَرَاعَةِ إِيسَبْنِ مَرْيَمْ مِنَ النَّسَارَى Like disowning Jesus, the Nasara, the Christians. Of course, Jesus does not, certainly he would not confirm and approve of the Christians who took him as the Lord on the day of judgment. And also we have this hadith. 
انزلونا من الربوبيه فقولنا فقولوا فينا ما شئتم do not attribute ربوبيه to us because that is for Allah subhanahu then say whatever merit you want to say about us because they deserve it any type of merit that a human being may have they have it but do not elevate them above the position of a human being as it says ma kana li basharan an yu'ti al is'al bashar anzaluna min al rububiyya bring us down from rububiyya what is rububiyya rububiyya is that you believe that they independently have powers or god has delegated certain things to them independently not in a vertical matter like angels the angels are doing many things in this world but it's in a vertical sort of uh, 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 relation interrelation it's god who empowers them that's fine as long as we believe it's god who empowers jibrail and mikhail that's fine they are ibadullah yes as long as we believe that god is god who empowers say for example aima for doing something whether dead or alive or the prophet peace be upon him it's fine god empowers them but if we think that no they are independently they have that sort of rububiyah then this is shirk so if they do not say that if they do not say that kunu ibadan liman dunillah what do they say kunu rabbaniin inshallah we will uh, go into further detail about this rabbani and rabbaniin what who are rabbaniin and what is this teaching of the messengers and the the mission of them and what they say to people uh, about their relation with allah and their relation to them uh, and we go into further details uh, about that next week inshallah rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa thank you very much Chris. um sorry let me uh, unfortunately um today sheikh is unable to join us so if i can ask you all to just keep your questions he should inshallah be with us next week so we will have a q and a session next week inshallah uh, thank you all for joining us and inshallah we'll see you all next week <laughs>